All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Charlie here from Writing Shotgun with Charlie. I've got my buddy Matt Mallory, Matt from Meet the Pressers, Matt from uh, PS and Ed, Public Safety and Education, Matt from everywhere else, right? <laughs> Mallory Market and right, Mallory Unlimited. We have Mallory Unlimited and Cook Limited. Yeah, Stop. so that's <laughs> you're, not, you're not limited. You're oh, awesome. I'm you're limited the awesome only, Charlie Cook. When you say, only, you know that guy that drives people around in their cars? That it, Yeah, that's Charlie. Everybody knows Right. Charlie. I'm limited only by my imagination. Hey, you remember that that uh, commercial where the little girl, her brother bites her, and she says, Charlie bit me. Oh, Charlie bit me, yes. As long as nobody <laughs> says that about you while you're driving them around in your car, <laughs> you're good. Right. right. You're good. I'll, I'll, I'll end up with P. Diddy, right? That'll that'll be bad. <laughs> Trying to stay relevant, that people. Trying to stay relevant. That was a good man. That's a good. Uh, good this good is quip. this is. A, I I got a fast pace show, man. How you been, man? What's been exciting? I've been Peter, good. Peter, hello. Oh, I took it off pretty quick. There we go. Say hi to uh, Peter. Peter, Peter hello. hello. What is that? Good is those cigars? Are those cigars in a cigar box, or is that ammo? That's long ammo. If that's ammo, I think that's cigars. Uh, I can't like, tell. His icon. I, I got my glasses on. I can't tell. That's sad. I uh, yeah, I just can't tell. What have you yeah. been up to, man? Where have you been? Oh, geez. Um, so I did, I've been doing some courses here in New York. I just did an NRA basic pistol instructor certification uh, out by Buffalo this past weekend. The weekend before that, I was in Rochester certifying uh, people in the Saber Red Pepper Spray instructor class. So just nice. uh, be, be bopping around. Next month, I'll be at the, um, the uh, Girl in a Gun conference. I'm teaching some classes there. Uh, wow, those are big rounds that he just posted. There you go. Ooh. I was like, right. either cigars or big ass rounds. So 6.5 PRC. Nice. Um, squirrel. Cool. Right. Uh, girl what, about you? what have you been up to? Oh, yeah. So I'm going girl and gun in Colorado. I'm doing some other courses out there. And then, you know, my training schedule is published. So everybody can stalk me if they like. But yeah, the farm cool. and the rentals and, you know, everything. All the businesses keeping busy. Eyes oh. open, work, eyes closed, dream about work. So what about you? Very cool. Uh, just plug it, plugging away at life, man. Uh, gun classes for me have actually slowed down a little bit. They were really good in November, December, January, and some of February, and uh, they've been slowing down. So I'm uh, I'm back to selling feed pictures. I guess is what I'm going to have to do. Ooh, I... Where where do, where do we? What, what's the address? For that? <laughs> right. Onlycharlie.com. Uh, oh, only Charlie. That's right. That's <laughs> Only Charlie, only Charlie. Uh, All right, so we got an, uh, we got Steve checking in, and Gary Gizzard is here as well. Gary, good to see you, bud. Thanks for tuning in. Um, let's get to it. So I do have something that I'm going to be uh, going to be doing next month. Actually, it's just like three weeks away, okay. uh, which is why we're bringing in the people that we have today. I'm going to be emceeing the event for the CNJFO and the Women for Gun Rights in New Jersey, which is going to be April 20th. And let's bring our people in, if we may. The first person we're going to bring in is Teresa Heinecker. Teresa Hi, is from, from the Howdy. Gadden State. Uh, she is uh, the Women for Gun, right, Gun Rights in New Jersey. We're going to bring in Kelly Pigeon. Kelly, Kelly. Pigeon is... What's happening, Kelly? Hey, y'all. Uh, Kelly, of course, is uh, armed and feminine, and she is the Women for Gun Right in New Jersey. And we're bringing in the gentleman last. Uh, we are bringing in Nick Wong, who is with the CNJFO, the Coalition of New Jersey Firearm Owners. Nick, what's happening? Yeah, I just uh, got home from work and popped it on the show. Hi, Nick. Awesome. Good to see you, Nick. <laughs> We're, we're glad you guys are all here. Um, so next month is, uh, what, three weeks, right? Three weeks or so, just over three weeks, is going to be this event that we're all going to be at. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's uh, let's start off with, with Teresa. Tell us tell us what's, what this event is and what's going on. Hi. So this is our annual fundraiser. We partner together, CNJFO and Women for Gun Rights in New Jersey, and we just give one heck of a fundraiser. People uh, from all over the state, as you know, New Jersey's kind of long and tall from north to south, but people come from all over. And we're just having our annual dinner fundraiser at this gorgeous venue called the mansion on Main Street in Voorhees, New Jersey. It's a really beautiful wedding venue. There's actually going to be a wedding in, in the building that night in another room. So it's just absolutely a gorgeous venue. There's an outdoor patio space. 
and uh, we have dinner. We have speakers, and I'm sure we'll get into that. And we actually have some silent auction items, so we're looking forward to it. I, I will add: not only is the place beautiful, but the food is amazing. <laughs> Like, don't be on a diet if you go. It's, it is just, you can't, you just can't eat everything that you want. It's it's just amazing. Just come, even if you don't want to see us, because you don't want to see us, just come for food. It's, uh, it is five-star, top-notch, just fantastic. So, Teresa, you're calling New Jersey long and tall. Does that mean we got to call New York wide and thick? <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, if you drive, for me to even get up to, like, gun for hire, as many of you know, um, you know, it's a wonderful range in New Jersey. It's about a two-hour drive from one direction from where I live. So I'm down in the Pine Barrens, and yet there are people that live even, you know, an hour or two below that um, can go all the way down to, you know, Cape May. So from Cape May all the way up to the top there, it's a several-hour drive. Um, so it's kind of hard gathering the 2A community in a place that's good for everybody. You know, sometimes the people in the north say, hey, why don't you come up north? And the people in the yeah. south ask us to go south. So, uh, but we have this gorgeous venue in Voorhees, New Jersey, which is Camden County. And it's kind of in a central southern um, western toward Philadelphia. I think a lot of our folks are flying into Philadelphia. And uh, it's going to be a great time. You have a hotel block for those who need to stay overnight, and there's yes. really less than two weeks left to get your tickets. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So this, uh, uh, the Voorhees Township is is like closer to Philadelphia than it is to uh, to to Newark or, or New York or anything else, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's only like 20 minutes from Philadelphia. So it's New Jersey is kind of interesting like that. It's easier to fly into Philly than it is for you to go up to Newark um, or wow. to fly into New York. But it all just depends on where you're going. And in this case, you definitely were in the Philadelphia suburbs here. Very cool. Very yeah, this, cool. this day and age, though, I think I want to drive. Boing! <laughs> <laughs> Right. I tell, you, I tell you an interesting story. Is right when I was supposed to go to shot shows, when hap all that stuff happened with Boeing, and wow. I think even Charlie had some issues with planes and flights because oh. of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a... issues, but yeah, I had a couple of flights canceled and huh? rescheduled because of the the whole Boeing thing. So that was fun. I, I was with a friend of mine. The, we call him the Bay State King of Glocks. And we had we were supposed to have like an hour and a half or two hour layover in Chicago. And we had about a five hour layover. Wow. And then we all got on the plane and they're like, yeah, we're having problems with the plane. So we're going to have to deplane, transfer all the luggage, transfer all the people and start over. We're like, oh, happy joy, joy. I remember that. Mm -hmm. oh, it was bad. We were missing you, Charlie, but we're glad you made it. We'd be missing you more. Oh, this is true. Oh, so let's 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 hug it out later. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> I know, I know, right, right. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so um, Nick, what's been happening with CNJFO? What have you uh, been, up? been, you know, doing a lot of stuff, uh, working, fundraising, etc. Uh, you know, we've had a, uh, recently a, a pheasant hunt down here in in, uh, in Jersey and Pemberton. Uh, had a hog, have a hog hunt actually coming up, I believe this weekend. Really? Um, and you know, that's, that one's out in Pennsylvania, but we do a lot of these fundraising type of events because it's, uh, you know, part of our tenants, it's education and bringing mm -hmm. people into this, uh, you know, the whole firearms community, uh, right. something that we do, you know, between the hog hunts, the, the pheasant hunts, all of our other, uh, you know, youth events, the dinners, fishing trips, et cetera. So to bring people into it. Um, and you know, we're, we're there, we're all over the place. That's, yeah. um, no, go ahead, Charlie. I was going to say the pheasant hunts are a lot of fun. I, I went to, yeah. um, I went to one a couple of years ago. You guys had me come down and speak at one and, and hang out with Rosie and stuff. And, uh, it was, it was a, it was a great time. It was a great time. I got to interview, uh, Dan Gerdovich, who was the president of CNJF, uh, CNJFO at the time. And I got some video. Um, I rigged up my, one of my GoPros on, the barrel of my shotgun. So I got mm -hmm. video of all the birds that I shot. It was, uh, it was really cool, man. It was a lot of fun. I used cool. to actually have a uh, head mounted camera that I, I would go around with to, to do that, but uh, I got a little unwieldy after a while. This last one was a little bit uh, interesting in terms of weather. It was pouring mm -hmm. rain. Everybody was soaked and we still brought home some, you know, plenty of birds. That was well, that's cool. 
So a fun fact with that, I, our daughter, we took her out on a pheasant hunt, youth pheasant hunt up here in New York. She was 12 and she's 24 now. So over 10 years ago, and, uh, she got a pheasant. She actually, and all the boys, she, she got a pheasant. None of the boys got a pheasant <laughs> actually. And, and, uh, one of the boys almost shot the dog. So, oh, yeah. and, uh, so she, she's proud about that. So she ended up working off the shotgun did babysitting and painting. So the shotgun she used, she could, she actually earned that. So we, I've got the shotgun in the safe, the, uh, the double barrel 20 gauge that she used in the soldier. And, uh, and then I also obviously, I uh, got it, got it, uh, mounted. So it's actually on the other side of the wall over there. Kind of a neat. That little. is, that's very cool. Yeah. That's the, um, the, the guy that, uh, the guy that was out with the guy that we were out with, with the dogs, he's like, listen, you can shoot me. Just don't shoot the dog. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. he'll he'll take a flesh wound, but uh, do not hurt the dog at all. No, Nick, you guys have hogs in at PA. I mean, we got them up in upstate, but they're they were in like a preserve and they got out. But so they, these are actually farm raised ones, but okay. uh, they're released onto a uh, island, and oh. you know that's really like brush filled island. It's hard to see sometimes, and uh, you actually have to hunt them out. Really? Can, and, but, and they they don't swim. They don't. Escape no, they, the they island. Pull off the island now. Really? Those would be like floating bacon or something if they swim. <laughs> so you do bring yeah. home some delicious bacon and some other, you know, plenty of other meat. Yeah, I would imagine if they're on that <laughs> island and they're not disturbed, they they probably are you know, root, rooting rooting all over there. Yeah, they um. When you said hogs in New Jersey, I'm thinking like it was some euphemism for like uh, politicians or something. I wasn't sure. It was <laughs> yeah, it's only one. one. It's Ooh. only one sheet, not two. <laughs> i got that all right I, I i got a fast paced show here man i got <laughs> i'm still blonde i didn't get it <laughs> and uh, so david hogg is uh H -O -G -G. oh got it got it got it <laughs> oh thank you well, I, thank you i i, 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 I got it i got it i got try it. to right. uh, <clears throat> i i try to say like when he you know he says to me keep my name out of your mouth <laughs> right you can you kind of you try to respect that i got it that's cool that's cool so all right miss uh, kellyanne what has been exciting with you ma'am uh wow um well new jersey keeps me hopping i'm actually the northeast regional director oh so i have higher northeast to look after for uh women for gun rights uh they keep me super busy i love helping them they are so dedicated to pushing the cause um, you know, most of the Northeast is oppressed for gun rights, so the girls are usually pretty charged up and uh, always doing something. Um, so it's good to see. You know, we always want to get more people engaged however we can. Um, a lot of people who can't will support us. That's what this event is about, is if you can't get out there and do a lot of this stuff, support the people who are. Um, and so that's where a lot of that support comes in, and we appreciate that. On the A and F side, my season is just starting. Uh, so our range is outside. <clears throat> so I've learned to start in April because March is always very unpredictable here. So uh, my classes begin the very first weekend of April and um, pretty much April is almost sold out, which is great. And May has started to fill up already. I even have some people sign up for June. So election years seem to be always really good for my business. Last year, can I say sucked on this? Last year oh, yeah. sucked. We're talking um, about hogs and shooting. Yeah, yeah hogs <laughs> suck. Keep it, out of your, keep it out of your mouth. I heard that. Um, but, you know, we started out great, but, you know, inflation came around. And, and I think some of that, Charlie, too, you know, when once after Christmas hits and people have all their bills to pay and then yeah. inflation is still crazy, people are really... You know, they have to be real judicious about how they're spending their discretionary dollars. And, um, you know, we we tend to think and hope that, you know, training should be paramount, you know. Um, but, you know, heck, eggs here went to four something a dozen and our gas here is still three seventy nine a gallon and nothing's coming down. So it's a tough call for people. And, you know. This was something that our girls in New Jersey are fighting right now. They just did a great email campaign where like about the, the permit prices to get a permit in New Jersey. And, you know, we we bark all the time about how 
you know, just to exercise a right is incredibly costly, like no other right costs this much money. And so then it really becomes discriminatory against those of more meager means or, you know, the single moms who are working two jobs and the prices of all the groceries. And now they've got to pay $400. Is it 400 Teresa? $400 for a fig, fig card? It's uh, Yeah, they want to, they're upgrading everything. I'll pull up exactly what he wants to do right now. It's $200 for a carry permit. And I believe it was going to go to 400 Right. And you have to understand too, there are all these layers upon layers of permits here. So even though you already have a carry permit, you still have to request another permit to purchase a handgun <laughs> if you want to buy a new handgun. So, and you have to pay for that and on and on and on, as you can imagine. So I'll, I'll research and give you the exact numbers in a second. So it's anyway, in the, in the oppressed Northeast, you know, our girls are really working hard and, you know, we could certainly use a lot more support in, in the echo chamber of more bodies. But um, there are a lot of people who would like to volunteer, you know, like I'll write emails, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go and testify somewhere, but I'll send a pile of emails out. So what I've been doing, in addition to A&F stuff, is really trying to get all the girls a little more organized in their state. I provide the resources they need for whatever they need. Um, so many of them have been to their state houses testifying, um, email campaigns, uh, Massachusetts, Charlie, you poor people, that giant mm -hmm. bill that's coming out that has just everything horrible in it. The girls are pulling their hair out up there. So however I can support them, and if that's with resources, with training, um, editing any of their um, written uh, submissions. That's what I do. That's what I do for the girls. So that is a lot. I've uh, like a big, uh, what do we want to call it? Like steel underwire bra. I'm the supporter of all of them. <laughs> Did you get that, Matt? Steel oh, underwire bra. That's I love it. Kelly, Kelly is our steel I'm, underwire. I'm the underwire. Rock. I'm the underwire. Nick, I just got something ready for Nick. You don't know it, but I got your box all packed up. Gonna ship out tomorrow, buddy. Great. Nick. All right. We're gonna so have Woman. some stuff that we're gonna be giving away. Yeah, I guess we're gonna call them mystery boxes. I think yeah, at the event. Yeah. yeah. That's you know that's one great thing too about this is uh, people. You know they they hear all this stuff and they want to get involved, right? But they don't know how. How do you get involved? How do you help fight for your rights? Come out to an event like this, yeah. right? It's a nice dinner. You can bring your spouse, bring some friends. Um, you know, we're going to have some good food. I will actually have some good cigars there. Uh, I, I run a nice little outdoor cigar lounge. Um, you know, we'll have the fire pits going and everything. It's just a nice, relaxing time. And just talk with people and see mm -hmm. how you can get involved. And that's, yeah. you know, one of the things that we're doing there. We'll have tons of, you know, stuff that's going around. There's going to be some swag flying around, even some of this stuff back here, you know, and uh, want to see people there. Yeah. Yeah. So you bring up a great point. It's about meeting each other face to face yeah. rather than just seeing each other online all the time. Yeah. We have a very robust community on Facebook, you know, and uh, the mm -hmm. firearms owner syndicate and thousands and thousands of people and we interact with each other, but it, actually seeing mm -hmm. each other face to face, it just, it gives it a whole other level. And mm -hmm. uh, some people mm -hmm. should walk away feeling inspired. And if um, Ooh, you were right before, Kel, the, yeah. the carry permit went to 400 from 200 The purchase, oh, uh, just an FID card, is going to $100 from $50. Uh, purchase permit is going to $50. And so imagine you already have an FID and you get, you know, you you have a handgun permit, you get your handgun permit, you go through the required training and then you get your carry permit and then you want to buy another handgun. You have to go and order another handgun permit. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, under Bruin, we think wow. this is pretty impermissible. So uh, it's going to be interesting where this goes. Well, they're Not trying sure. to price people out if they, if they can't ban it. And then Bruin says they can't. Now they're figuring out ways they can, you know, in New York state, they're all the ammunition mm -hmm. things and taking the NRA right. instructors out of it. They got a, a bill going forward where they're trying to get all N NRA instructors removed from teaching the class here in New York state, which is going to totally tank how many people can take the class to apply, which, you know, the, the training thing, I don't think, and I want to get your guys' opinion on this. Do you think 
the the training aspect that these states are putting in place, like New York State with the 18 hours and such. Do you, do you see, because I haven't seen many cases that are going towards the Supreme Court when it comes to the training aspect of it. I think a lot of those are like, well, everybody should have training and a lot of people just back off any kind of lawsuits. And I, I don't think the government should make people do the training. I think people should seek it out. It should be a self, uh, you know, self-policing thing, if you will. What do you guys yeah. think? We have that. Oh, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> no, go, go right ahead. Well, in PA, we don't have any required training. That bill has come up over and over and over. You know, th there's a difference. As trainers, of course, we all want people to be trained, right, and to be safe. Right. And that, that's the biggest piece. But when we're talking about your right and voluntary, that's a different story. Um, you know, if you want to keep a gun in your house, fine. You know, if you want to carry it, it's a whole different skill set, right? So training is paramount. But um, we have um, a, a colleague uh, who actually is fairly liberal, but she is also a gun instructor and um, works with uh, the Liberal Gun Club. And she is an accomplished constitutional lawyer, by the way, and her take actually on uh, required training was fine. You want to require it, then it has to be free for everybody. It has to be available immediately to them. And if they can't get there, you've got to provide free transportation. And I was like, wow, that came out right. of her mouth. But but she's <laughs> right because, you know, all your other rights, Can't you know, you exercise sort of that same way. If you're requiring it, then there should be no obstacles. Like like when I do my training courses, right, just show up. Just show up with your lunch. I'll give you everything you need to have because I want there to be no barriers to learning. Yes. That's my motto, no barriers to learning. So if you want to put all of these other things into place, there should be no barriers to getting the requirements, right? So it could be a good fight. It really could, you know, Bruin, we love, we like cheered, right? Teresa, we're yeah. like, yay, Bruin is a bit right, Matt. You know, when you can't go after the gun, you have to go at all the accessories and everything else around that to make it, you know, yeah, hard. I mean, right? it's, make it's, it as difficult as you can for somebody not to be able to exercise the right, which is the it's, it's Sun Tzu, the art of war. You, you know, you, you just starve them, right? Starve mm -hmm. the guns. If, you know, you're starving the enemy, starve the guns. If you starve mm -hmm. the guns, they can't shoot the guns if they can't, if they can't get right. ammunition. So I mean, right. that's, that's, that's what they're talking I'll ask you like ammunition is covered under arms, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The it's ammunition. yeah. I mean, ammunition. all these things, the common use, even back from Heller, you know, that just courts have been very abusive lately. Uh, that's our, current problem. And I think maybe the training issue will be dealt with later on, but there are some other issues that are probably easier fruit to pick right now. Right. And, you know, the sensitive places really is, you know, for us in New Jersey is a huge thing. Same thing Same. in New York, obviously. Um, and they are going to just try every way that they can go about it. So there's, there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of abuse in the system, a lot of abuse in permitting. There's abuse in sensitive places, uh, you know, abuse. We can't have hollow points here. You know, all the things that are in common use, really, you should be able to just go in court and say, get summary judgment because this is already, you know, pretty much not really a question of fact anymore. But, you know, of course, the courts are activists and, and they want to delay. I think a lot of the circuits want to delay so that, their hopes are that, um, you know, that President Biden might have an opportunity to appoint more justices to the court and they can undo Bruin. So I think their only strategy is delay right now. Yeah. And it, it's abusive. Um, you know, I have a big problem with it. And I don't know what the recourse is. You know, it needs to be figured out. Can you sue for abusive delay? <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> I, I'm sure you can say that it violates your rights, but I mean, just proving that and getting a court to, you know, right. agree you like, yeah, this court has done this. It's like asking the Fox to watch the hen house. It's just yeah. not going to happen. So, right. you know, SCOTUS, you, you think about it, SCOTUS gave, you know, the courts a real smackdown about how they were abusing Heller, that they weren't mm -hmm. applying Heller properly. They were abusing it. They were abusing Heller. They weren't following Heller and they gave them a real smackdown about it, but they still continue to abuse everything. So, mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's very frustrating for for those of us who really believe in the judiciary, for those of us who really believe that the third branch is like supposed to be oh. that firewall against 
tyranny. It's they're supposed to be the ones that stop, um, you know, the unconstitutional action. And when the, it starts to get eroded, it's very frustrating for those of us who, you know, really kind of have all our all our eggs in that basket. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. I so I have. Um, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say um, part of the fundraising that these guys do, what, what do we do with all of that money? You know, in addition to provide for travel for the girls to go and have all these meetings, we also use that money to file amicus briefs or amicai brief. Which way would it be? Amicai brief? Amicus briefs? <laughs> I would call it amicus curiae briefs. Uh, you know, how I well, <laughs> curiae briefs and my Latin or Greek. I don't even know which one is a little rusty Latin, at the moment. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we have organizations that will um, file them on our behalf for free. And sometimes we have to pay for those and they're not cheap. And so a lot of the fundraising goes to do that because, you know, when we say we're committed to, safeguarding the second amendment, you sort of have to make that commitment and how far are you going to go? And, you know, Teresa, tell them what I think our biggest, our biggest accomplishment so far was with the case, the big case, tell them all, WGR, well, DC project. If Bruin. Oh yeah. Bruin. Oh yeah. With Bruin. So in Justice Alito's concurring opinion, he cited the DC project amicus brief and it was just incredible. It was really an incredible moment. And, you know, uh, yeah, it was really a big deal. So it's worth it. You want to have your voice in there. And especially, you know, for groups that might touch on um, touch on the topics from like a different angle. I think sometimes the justices are looking for that because you can have a lot of groups repeating themselves and just walking all over each other, repeating the same arguments. But when you give it from the point of view that, you know, women have this perspective, we're more likely to be, you know, victims of violence. And, um, you know, we partnered with some other groups as well on that. So it was very exciting. And I think that was a huge accomplishment. And yeah, so mm -hmm. I, I think it's worth it to keep doing that. And we were so lucky to file with a uh, partner with GOA on mm -hmm. and a brief for the Coons case out of the Third Circuit mm -hmm. here. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're still waiting for them to do what we mm -hmm. need to do. I mean, we're not even halfway there yet, really. There's so much to be done. So it's, it's so historical. I think, I mean, where you can actually look at probably the biggest 2A decision of ever. Yeah. And our name is in it. Like our name is in it from us. Like, I just think it's, it's fantastic. And so that's why we do all of this fundraising is to try to make a difference. Cause it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult when you're beaten down all the time, but those few wins, you know, just, I think give everybody the stamina to just keep going. Yeah. For I sure. would say, I, I would say that 1791, the ratification of the second amendment <laughs> might've been the biggest, but yeah, I, th I think it's the second Kelly. <laughs> from from Supreme Court, from the Supreme yeah. Court. Okay, all right, fair enough. That's fair. In modern there times. Oh. Modern <laughs> there you go. Modern yeah. times. So, Tr Teresa, have you um have you heard anything about the if anybody any of the uh, five organizations, the five lawsuits that were heard in March of last year, and then the three judge panel ruled in December on December eighth? Have you heard of any of those cases appealing the three judge panel's ruling? I know are we talking about Coons and Siegel here in New Jersey? Or are you talking about other ones? I, you know, there's so many. If I if I knew the names, then well, I, I might. I, yeah, I knew the GOA. I was talking to the attorney of G, of GOA, and he said that they were uh, they were. I'll be hum, I'll be surprised uh, how they move forward with it. So my assumption is that they were going to appeal it, and I think he said he, they had until like the seventh or the fourteenth of March to appeal it. Oh, so I think that might be Antoniuk in New York, and yes. I believe yeah. that they did file uh, mm -hmm. with the SCOTUS. They're trying to get, mm -hmm. you know, you got to go where you got to go, and you got to try to get the help, and we do need the Supreme Court to step in here. The circuits are, um, they're jerking everybody around. You know, they're really playing a lot of games. It's obvious they're playing games, delay games, and um, it's not meant to be this way, so hopefully the Supreme court will step in and clarify some of the things that need to be clarified. You know, there's a lot of argument right now about 1791, or if we're talking about like post, you know, like the reconstruction period uh, for um, the analogy for gun law. And so it's going to be interesting. It'd be great. Maybe if they clarified that a little bit, if they gave the circuits a little bit of a smack that they deserve to have uh, for, you know, causing these delays. Uh, I think the fourth circuit mm -hmm. recently did that. They, they waited forever and then 
you know, just said, no, I think we're going to kick it back. We have the same problem here with our uh, assault weapons ban and the magazine limit case that's been pending since 2018. Okay. It was granted, vacated and remanded by the Supreme Court back down for down to the district court. Um, and it really it just doesn't need to be there. They could have kind of, you know, it, it could have been dealt with that. Hey, this was filed pre Bruin. We have Bruin now. Let's do this. And it's just been delayed forever. I mean, forever. It's 2024, and it's been pending since 2018. Yep. Wow. It's ridiculous. So yeah. uh, there's oral arguments on that April 10th. So explain, to, explain to them super briefly what the Coons case is about, because we partner with GOA in this one. Yeah, with Coons and Siegel. Coons and Siegel are both cases that are against the sensitive places in New Jersey. They tried to uh, basically paint the entire state right, as a sensitive place, and they couldn't name one place that we were able to carry outside of our homes, um, and so it's just been, you know, attacking those things one by one. Judge Bum in the district court, she gave us, uh, you know, a preliminary injunction that, you know, now at least I can drive in my car uh, with my car. Obviously, I have a carry permit, and I can go to these places, but you still, um, Third Circuit kind of backed off some of those places, including places that serve alcohol. I think they uh, backed off on zoos and there might and parks, I believe. So there's we have a chart about where you can and can't go. Um, I don't know if people in other states have to go through that too, but we have a little chart <laughs> just to make sure that you're going, uh, you know, you're going about yourself properly. But um, yeah, it's a lot of back and forth. It's a lot of it. So we'll have to see. We're waiting for the third circuit to take some action. Yeah, we had mm -hmm. a uh, we had a county here in upstate that uh, had on the application. One of my students asked, "What am I supposed to put down on this this question they're asking?" And I was like, "What does it say?" And the question was, "For what reason do you want a pistol license?" And I was like. They can't ask that. That's Bruin. 20, June of 2022, Bruin said, nope, you can't ask for proper cause specifically. And uh, so I texted the sheriff and the sheriff's like, oh, we just want to know why they want it. I'm like, but you can't ask that, sheriff. That, mm -hmm. that, it's illegal. And he goes, he goes, well, it doesn't affect them getting a license. I'm like, you can't ask that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and he goes, and he goes, that's, you know, but that, you know, that's what the judge wants. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, and, and then all, lo and behold, GOA gets uh, wind of it. Now there's a cease and desist from GOA to that county sheriff's uh, department to remove that. Cause it's like, you can't do that. You, 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 you can't ask the question, period. If there's no, I don't care why you want to know. You don't need to know. It's none of your business. Just it like the just, social, it, social media stuff. You know, there, it, there's it, so much of that, that politicians or elected officials pass knowing that it's not even allowed. Like it drives me crazy. And then we on the other side have to spend so many resources of time, money, you name it, to just prove that we're right. Like even here in Pittsburgh, like we have preemption in Pennsylvania, which means no municipality can enact its own gun law, basically. Right. Yep. And Pittsburgh says, we don't care. We're going to do it anyway. Right. And so they do knowing full well, knowing that it was illegal. And of course, it took time, money, energy, you name it to yep. fight it. Here it is. And luckily it didn't take too long. And of course the state overturned it. <laughs> These people do this all the time, knowing that it is clearly and, illegal. And I'm like, there should be a law against doing something <laughs> illegal. And, and, and the sad, and the sad part is they're using our tax dollars to fight right. us. Right. <laughs> so it's like, we got to take right. our own money and fight against our own money. It, it's, yes. it's lunacy. It's, it's lunacy. exhausting. I think honestly, I think that what we should do is we should we should make them personally responsible. If a politician puts a bill forward oh, that turns mm -hmm. into a law and that law is ruled, you know, thrown out and unconstitutional as it goes down the road, they mm -hmm. need to pay us all back the money we lost out of their own pocket. That would make yeah. a lot of them turn around and say, you know what? I don't think I want to lose my personal money. But I'm yeah, for that. sure. For sure. So speak, speaking of money, I've um uh, John, a good friend of mine and a you know, friend of everybody, of course, uh, John Petrolino convinced me that I needed to start the process to get my New Jersey carry permit. So I actually started the process in 22. And this is pretty interesting. I was doing the, the qualification with a friend of mine that's an NRA instructor. And three rounds into it, I had a squib load, which I've never had before. Yeah. And of course, I fortunately, I knew what it was. I was more aggravated than nervous or scared. And I had to find a screwdriver and... Uh, and hammer the uh, the bullet out of the um, uh, out of the barrel of my gun. But uh, anyway, fast forward to uh, middle of February, I 
got on the New Jersey State Police website. I spent the $50 to apply for the license. Then I had to make an appointment to get fingerprinted at an Identigo, which I believe is owned by one of the politicians in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, former Governor his- uh, Corzine, yeah. Yeah, there's really? a history of our former yeah, Governor Corzine. He owned a share in it when it was another name. It wasn't Identico then. It was called um, Sage, Sage and Morpho or something. Sage and Morpho, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I don't know if he's currently got an interest in this, but you know, there's somebody right. making money off <laughs> of this. I'm sure he's Come getting on. a taste of the action, I'm sure. So um, it was, it was uh, go ahead. Uh, not only is it like you got to pay the money to to do the fingerprints at this only special locations that are you know mandated by the, the court uh, by you know the law or whatever. If you're going to do this out of state, you have to pay extra. Oh yeah, it cost me ninety eight dollars to get <laughs> fingerprinted and have them sent to New Jersey. And two weeks afterwards, I still hadn't heard anything. So I wrote to the uh, Jersey State Police. I'm like, hey, I'm just checking to see what's going on with this. I've called Identigo. Identigo said my, uh, I got an email, excuse me. I got an email uh, less than two weeks ago and it said, uh, we haven't received your fingerprints. So I called Identigo. I actually stopped in at the Identigo, which is part of a, a chain uh, law mm-hmm. tax tax place. And I went in, I said, hey, I'm just checking on this. And the guy's like, oh, I don't really work here. The lady that does the fingerprints, I don't know. She's not here. I don't know when she comes in. I can't really help you. I'm like, do you have a phone number I can call her? He's like, I, I got nothing. I'm like, oh, the- wonderful. He, so no, sir, I, he, he got your $98. That's what he got. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I ended up uh, getting some screenshots and sending this to back to the New Jersey State Police because, you know, you, they say you have 90 days to, to get this cleared up. So I wrote back to them. I said, hey, listen, here's all my information. Um, here's my receipt from my Dentigo. I had the fingerprints done in the middle of February. We're in the beginning of March. I'm not sure what's going on. And uh, they wrote back to me and said that I messed up the fingerprint number. And I'm like, I don't think I put the fingerprint number in because I didn't have a fingerprint number when I sent in my application. So the, uh, the lady here that charged me $98 messed that up. Um, so yeah, so I'm kind of, kind of waiting in turmoil, waiting, you know, waiting for that to see what the, uh, what's going on. Then if I wanted to, if I wanted to get the, um, the carry permit for New Jersey, I've got to drop 275 at gun for hire to do the C care uh, qualification. And then it's going to be another $200 on top of that. So 200 bucks with 275 plus another 150 bucks. What's that like six and a quarter? Um, yeah, the price, the price of a, I don't know, seven high points is what it's going to cost me. I mean, this is ridiculous. How often do you go to New Jersey? And here's my question. Does New Jersey have reciprocity with anybody else? No. Oh, are you no, kidding me? No. Unless no. you're there all the time, is that even worth it? Wow. It's so yeah, only what is, for New Jersey, though it does give you reciprocity in other states. But like what I don't already have, I have, you know, Pennsylvania has a ton of them. Wow, I have yeah. Utah, so... Exactly. I've got I've got a mass uh, a mass Utah and a and a Pennsylvania permit. So Jersey is only getting me Jersey, and the reason that I'm getting it is because I go down to Jersey and I'll stay with Petrolino and we'll go down and go sporting clays in Pennsylvania or Virginia or something. We'll do all of our fun activity, and um, I want to make sure I can bring my shotgun with me and I don't have to. Um, transfer it to john um should we ever get pulled over and not admit that it's my shotgun so um that's really why i'm getting it to cover my tail when i'm trans uh when i'm uh, traveling through new jersey so there is a bill that's been in uh congress for rights of everybody for transportation alone i don't know why more uh pro-gun legislators don't get on board and start co-sponsoring. It has so few co-sponsors. It's not even constitutional carry. It's strictly uh, interstate transport is all that it is. So that would basically kind of cover you because you're traveling through New Jersey to Pennsylvania or to (laughs) Virginia. Kind of like Leosa for law enforcement, that kind of concept. Right. 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 I mean, it's it's proposed every Congress it's proposed and it only gets a few, you know, co-sponsors i'm like this is just stupid but i i always i said to Teresa all the time she's tired of hearing me say it under bruin i truly believe that means constitutional carry because if you have a right to carry a gun outside your home mm. who's to say that stops at a state line yeah. Where's the like, order? and i always say i don't want it to be pigeon versus the united states <laughs> 
don't want to be the one who says that. Right. But you have a nice ring to it. But um, <laughs> I, I think it would be the ultimate test, and somebody, not me, should challenge it. So get arrested, charged, and let this Ch- change burned. your name to Pigeon. <laughs> I can, I can see I can see the 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 banner now. It's a pigeon bringing justice across the country, delivering a homing, justice. A homing pigeon. A homing. Uh, the homing pigeon. pigeon. Got it. That's that, that's what I thought when you said that. Pigeon oh. against the United States. There we go. At this point, so many people are so annoyed and pissed off at all these restrictions and everything. Yeah. Some people are just saying, "Forget about it. I'm just going to you know conceal this concealed." Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's tough. So one of the things uh, I'm sure you guys have heard about this and staying with the whole, you know, the Bruin decision and uh, Bruin giving us constitutional carry. There's the case in New, uh, in Chicago where an illegal alien had a gun that fired, (laughs) fired, didn't have a criminal record, didn't have a criminal record because he doesn't have a record because he's here illegally, (laughs) but, um, doesn't have a FOID card in Illinois, so he got the gun illegally. And I, the pictures I've seen, I've seen pictures of him shooting in a street. Um, but it said that he, even though he's here illegally, he has the right to keep and bear arms. And I don't really, I don't really have an issue with that per se. But um, it says that uh, you know he hasn't. He's just protecting his family in the summer of 2020 is when he got this, and he wants to be able to. Per- protect his family and protect himself. And I'm like, dude, I totally get it. If that guy is able to keep his gun that he came into the country illegally and he has a gun illegally, then why are we worried in in occupied territory states? Why are we worried about assault weapon bans and in high cap magazines and all this other nonsense that we have to deal with? Why are we worried about this at all? If Someone that is not here legally has the right to be able to keep and bear arms and buy, he can buy a gun illegally and, and possess it illegally. Why are we concerned about any of this nonsense? It's because the, the rights of the illegals apparently are trumping the rights of, yeah. you know, the actual oh. citizens. I was going to say, because we're not, we're not illegal. That's what we got to worry yeah. about. Right. I told right. my wife. They pander to our vote because, you know, they, they try to, yeah. to get to the ones that they can try to bring in to vote it's for like, them. Every day my wife tells me a new story and I'm like, I'm just going to go down to Mexico, come back and say, hey, I'm, you know, I, I'm no habla ingles. You know? <laughs> right. It's, I'm a, it's, when, you're, when, you're, when you're filling out the 4473 and it says, have you ever renounced your citizenship? You're like, have I ever done it? Have I ever done it sober and seriously? No. <laughs> <laughs> but plenty of other times. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, we actually had this discussion. Teresa has a very interesting viewpoint. Um, And like we said, like, if you're a person, like, there's a difference between the people of the country and the citizens of the country, right? So therein lies some difference. And if he has the right to protect himself under Bruin, great. But he still didn't have a FOID card in Illinois. That's my big issue. Yep. is, you know, those people who have a FOID card in Illinois, they've got to go through their 16 hours of training. They've got to pay all of their money. They get a background check process of the year. They do a background check on all those people. That's my issue, is that everyone else has to go through this, not necessarily that he wanted to protect his family. Good for him. Go ahead. You know, I'm glad he is. He's in Chicago, for God's sakes. He should. Yeah. But he he is not held to the same standard as the people who went through all of the hoops and chains to get to, to do it by the books. That's my right. argument. Teresa's well, argument's a little different. And, and if you and, and real quick, uh, Teresa, in a second here with, with this one, this this message that came in. Right. Hang on, Charlie. Let me put this one up. Oh, so it, we're fighting each other. So if you believe in shall not be infringed, I do for the citizens. I mean, I've got it right there behind me, right? So if you're here illegally, you're not a citizen of this country. You're not somebody who's come in the legal path. You're get you're you're taking up resources. You're 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 taking up positions and jobs and and whatnot. So yeah, I mean, I yeah, defend yourself, but l- legally. I mean, if we're made to go through all this, how are illegal people getting around it? That's that's my point. So my attitude is if that person gets to break laws, what laws do I get to break? Because let's let's make this real. Let's make it even like it's not 
fair. And I sound like my, you know, kids when they were teenagers, that is not fair. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's not fair that somebody else can break laws um, for whatever reason. And I have to follow these laws. If we're not going to break mm-hmm. laws, then let's, let's break laws, you know? Cook versus the United States. Oh, here we go. I can't believe me. I can't afford that. I can't afford the Jersey permit. I can't afford a court case. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. Teresa has a good take on this. Give them the ears real go quick. Ahead, and then we'll go back to the fundraiser. Oh, well, yeah, I, I'm actually for the expansion of 2A rights and, you know, our rights pre-exist even the Second Amendment. So, um, you know, there are certain rights that non-citizens are still, you know, still benefiting from. And I think that the Second Amendment isn't the way and it, it shouldn't be the method that's used to try to enforce immigration law. I think immigration law needs to be enforced. Mm-hmm. It does. But I don't think the Second Amendment is really the way to go about that. And I understand people are kind of like just mingling these things together. Um, I don't think that, you know, people who come to this country, you know, who immigrate here, that they should have rights that are superior to ours. But I also think that if you're making the argument that there should be some kind of gun control for them, then really, it's no different than what mom's demand says that we should be under gun control as well. So I I don't Mm -hmm. think it can make a consistent argument that you're against gun control. You're against background, universal background checks, because we know they're not universal, that criminals don't abide by them. We already know like this guy, he's going to get his firearm anyway, shooting in the street. However, he obtained it. We understand that you know, by trying to insist that they follow the same laws that they're trying to push on us, that they're not all following them anyway. So, you know, they can't have it both ways. You know, the gun control people really can't have it both ways. I understand they want to expand the rights so that these people can vote. I think it's more or less trying to kind of a uh, roundabout way of getting an expansion of their right to vote. I think that there's, it's, you know, they're trying to use the Second Amendment to, I don't know, they're manipulating it basically. Uh, for political reasons. I don't think we should take the bait on it. And I just, you know, I don't know. I'm a little bit more of an absolutist that way. Mm -hmm. Mm, Interesting. Interesting. I love it. Uh, I love it. This is awesome. All right. Listen, we, uh, we, uh, as Kelly said, we do need to talk about the event in New Jersey on April 20th, uh, in the Voorhees, uh, the Voorhees township. Um, who else is going to be there besides all of us? Who else is going to be there? Well, we, we the name came up just a little earlier. Uh, the man himself, Dick Heller, will be there. Nice. And you know, it's going to be exciting to meet him. I uh, actually haven't met him yet because I've been so busy with with everything. But I know he's come up for some events, uh, so I'm looking forward to meeting him. Uh, another person that I've met before at Shot Show uh, and has come up here in New Jersey, uh, Gabby Franco. Um, and then let's see who else do we have, Teresa? I think we have a couple others. I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, Lucretia right now, Hughes is coming up uh, as well from down south, and she has a very poignant story um, about losing her son um, to gang violence. And we are also having a rabbi, Andy Mars from North Jersey. He is coming to speak as well. Um, I believe he's going to address the impacts of um, you know on the Jewish community after. The, their attacks October 7th. So going to be very interesting. And I would just say, if anybody who's listening has enjoyed this type of bannering that we have had going back and forth, this is what you get to talk about too when you come here. You know, you've got a lot of really uh, good mind, good-minded people here with a lot of, um, uh, what I would say, we've got great knowledge bases. We've got very opinionated people. So like the night can just fly and you can have great conversation about a number of two way issues here. In addition to great food. <laughs> so all of this kind of conversation takes place and good prizes. I was mentioning that I have a big box going out to Nick. So New Jersey um, has very strict gaming laws. Um, and so we can't really do raffles or anything like that. So most of the things need to be a silent auction. And, uh, so there will be a number of certificates, uh, um, big prizes, right? Big prizes. Right. So, There's, uh, um, you need to be valid, a valid, uh, FID card holder to participate in the silent auction. 
<laughs> Correct. So some of those are provided by WGR and CNJFO will have some of their own things. So they have CNJFO has their own few things. We have our own few things and together we share a number of things. So we will split those proceeds um, so that each organization can continue to you know, just keep pounding forward in support of two-way issues. Um, but the mystery boxes, which are really great. So just come and figure out the mystery boxes. So I have a whole pile of stuff heading over to Nick that we are going to box up and you don't know what's in it. So we will guarantee you that it will be nice stuff. And you might just have a fit card for some of them. We don't know. Um, so there'll be a, a, a variety of some mystery boxes too with a, the low number and an estimated retail value. So I think people will just be sort of pleasantly surprised when they open their box and figure out what, what they have won. So and you see to, all the swag here behind me. You know, I go, I go to the shot show, but specifically to get stuff for events like these, you know, some of it yeah. might be thrown in there. Just <laughs> We're giving away patches too. Everybody who comes is going to have a little favor of, you know, our patches, pens, usual kind of swag things. So, uh, yeah, nice. it'll be a good time. Nice. Good if, time. Uh, if, you, if you haven't been to one of the diversity shoots that Tony Simon does, uh, mm -hmm. Nick is like his own traveling cigar lounge. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got a, he's got a, he's got chairs. He's got a space heater. He's, he's got all the stuff, like all the stuff. It's awesome. like tailgating. So, yeah. It's, it's totally, it's total tailgating with the, um, uh, you know, with the cigars hanging out. It's, it's great. Last time, uh, a couple weeks, about a month ago, I guess it was, I was down at the, um, uh, down at the gun for higher range at the diversity shoot. And, uh, Nick, like as soon as everything's done and everyone leaves, like, we all hang out outside. Nick Nick pulls out a space heater. Um, we sit in chairs. We sit Man around. Heater, smoke. Yeah. yeah, Nick smoked like seven cigars. I think I don't know how this guy smokes these things so fast. Holy moly, dude! It was, but, it was only um, two, but still, it was only two. All right, he's counting. He's counting. But it's it's great, man. It's great. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And there will be a cigar lounge at the event. So if you want nice. some cigars, I only smoke good cigars. With space, there, there we are. Life is short. Yeah, there's a fire pit out there, so it's a beautiful, gorgeous, you know, outdoor patio. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Have a cigar, have some nice scotch or whiskey or bourbon, whatever you like. And hey, do we have? Um, we don't have a dress code for the event, right? It's just sort of come as you are, but it is. But it's a fancy place. Yeah, it's a, it's wedding. business casual. That's what we <laughs> tell people because there's a, a wedding going on there as well. So we really don't. It's not like a, a hat and shorts kind of place, in my opinion. You know, it's definitely much more. It's yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's a Saturday evening as well. It starts at seven, so I think um, you know that also kind of sets it elevates. The, you know, it's it's a nice place, definitely. It's gonna and be we're awesome. gonna have a, a DJ there as well, and Charlie's gonna be our MC, and we're so grateful. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. I'm I'm honored. I've been binge watching. Uh, the Sopranos just to try to work on getting an accent down. So, <laughs> make my day, punk. Oh, right. we have a photographer coming too. Don't we have a photographer coming? I think we do. Yeah, we do. I think, yes. Yeah. Uh, should so. be. A, uh, we're gonna have a photo booth, I believe, with a uh, you know a combined mm -hmm. CNJFO and uh, Woman for Gun Rights uh, <laughs> backdrop. Yeah. Uh, we did that last year. Uh, unfortunately, I had to update the banner. <laughs> Slab yeah, yeah, right. guns does not like dress code. Just business. I guess camo might like Delete dress it. camo. No. Slab, dress Slab camo. would show up in a tracksuit. That's what. That's his thing. You know, <laughs> that's I, that's what, yeah. We have our our, our you know our tracksuit uh, things that we go around with at shot show and 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 in the videos <laughs> that that I help him out with. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Well, yeah. listen. Um, before we have everyone plug their stuff, we are going to do a giveaway, which I know we completely forgot to mention, um, but it's been running at the bottom of the banner. So uh, I'm going to say it's probably too late to enter, but uh, you do need to go to oh, two I'll minutes. All right. We I'll got shut it, I'm going to shut it off in two minutes. We got two and two, Chuck Willery. All right. Um, <laughs> go to meetthepressers.com slash giveaway. And enter in CNJFO as the code, and you'll be entered to win either a Mantis X10 or one of the CERT pistols that we have. So it's great to have Next Level Training and Mantis on as sponsors for the uh, the Matt and Charlie show here. Mm -hmm. uh, so please, please make sure you guys get a chance to do that. Um, all right, let's. Uh, we got so one minute left. What can we talk about for one minute? 
Only one? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I love this. <laughs> well, you only have, I don't know, less than two weeks to get tickets for our event. You have to go to cnjfo.com slash events, and you'll find the ticket link there. Mm-hmm. We and also have gonna... it on we also have it on the WGR website. If you go to womenforgunrights.org and click the shop tab, you will see it says New Jersey Mon- Mansion event. You can click it and there's a link right to the tickets as well. Nice. So. Gotcha. And if anybody's Very... interested in joining the Women for Gun Rights in New Jersey, you can just you can join up on the website and say jo- that you are that. interested in in participating. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, uh with the old the old DC project swag. Is this now collector item stuff? Oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Well, I will say this. Um, DC project foundation still is our legal name. Okay. So All right. it had always been like DC project foundation, women for gun rights. Right. It was like, Bleh. but you know, when you just <laughs> truncated the formal name, DC, Pro- like no one knew what that was. Like this is, this is just like totally the coolest, logo of ever i think you know this lady head but you can't really tell what it was like your logo or your name should say what you do right, right. so um <clears throat> we just sort of truncated the front part for branding to just use the back part women for gun rights but so the yeah the website if you have an old shirt and says dc project.info that's not going to work um it may sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't um but legally it's still the same so it could be collector's items you never know um nice. but we we're gonna have some out. fantastic raffles coming up do i have a minute left we have serious we big 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 raffles come up sig sour is doing um a few packages for us this year Ooh, baby our first package coming out is going to be a rose package i don't know if you as boys follow along but the women are crazy for this gun mm-hmm. and um sig has put together a fantastic package that not only includes the rose and the whole package but rose swag that goes along with it ammunition eyes ears like everything so um that'll be the rose around. glasses right there huh yeah. these are sig rose rose glasses. glasses but there it is so nice um, that's going to be our very first one that we do with them. And so we look forward to launching that in the next month. Um, they've always been a really good partner of ours, as has been Walder and Mossberg and Ruger um, year after year after year. So we greatly appreciate that. Um, Sim will also have a Daniel Defense is doing a big raffle for us. Staccato is going to be doing a big raffle for us, too. So uh we're excited. We're excited to what this election year will bring and new toys and prizes and sponsors and just help us to keep moving on because the busiest right. people stay the busiest. Yes, right? they, do. they do. All right, Matt, do you have a number range for us, sir? I do. So let's have Teresa give me a number from 2 to 19. That's all we had, 19. 16. 16. 16. You chose that because of your daughter's age, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm so predictable, right? <laughs> that's that's Jeannie Denison. Den, Denston. Dens, Denston. How do you say it, Charlie? I, I always say it wrong. Look at that. Steve just posted. I can't say Jeannie, so. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Je- Jeannie, you're the winner. Jeannie's won before, hasn't she? I don't know, but Steve Denston just typed something there. Yeah, are they related? Simon! I think they're related. Tony Simons just chimed in. Tony, we, we may have brought you up. Uh, Tony has a small shirt. <laughs> yeah, so has. Tony has a 3X. It's yes. a little small. It's a dirty head. All right, and then uh, let's have uh, Nick. Get, Nick, give me a number between uh, 2 and 19 without saying 16. Oh, uh, we'll go with 9. 9. That's well, my daughter's yeah. age, so... Oh, nice. Shirley. Do this Shirley. the same way. It's the same thing. Shirley Wattrell. Shirley! Oh, very yay! cool. Congratulations, Shirley. She's great. She's a lot of fun. She's cool. Miss and Florida. What, uh, what I'll do is I'll reach out to both of them, see which one wants which, because we have both. They're about the same price. And uh, then that way, if somebody already has a cert, then the Mantis might be better for them. <laughs> we'll kind of, we'll kind of see. So. Great. Well, Steve, if you want to come meet Matt, he's going to be at the fundraiser. So there you go. 
Well, Steve yes, met me. He didn't Charlie. meet Charlie. He hasn't met he me. I'll be at the go. fundraiser. I'll yeah, be there. there you go. Go to the fundraiser. I'll be there. Come on I'll down. Be there. I'll bring, be there. And, and you bring, bring your missus, obviously. obviously. And bring Charlie some maple syrup because they have phenomenal maple syrup. Oh, yeah. Mm. That would be great. Jeannie, be Jeannie's awesome. typing in all caps. She's very happy. She's very excited. Very excited. Okay. Awesome. Well, listen, uh, let's have everyone plug where they're at. Nick, how can people find you, sir? And all so of the stuff. Find that, uh, me, um, my personal uh, Instagram, everything is at card shark, K R D S H R K. I'm a you know board member of CNJFO, so CNJFO.com. You know, see us there. Uh, also help out with the New Jersey Gun Forums, so NJGunForums.com. Uh, Slav Guns is another YouTube channel I help out with, and uh, yeah, I'm everywhere. Sweet. <laughs> all right, very cool, Kellyanne. So this part of me, uh, womenforgunrights.org, anything you contact us, I will get a copy of that. Um, everything else is Armed and Feminine on all the socials and uh, armedandfeminine.com. And I really suck at social media. <laughs> kind of suck. My Facebook page, I try to keep, I'm, I'm active. That kind of dates me. Um, I hop over to Instagram maybe once every four days just to see if my daughter sent me a recipe. But <laughs> And my YouTube channel, I just let go. It just sort of too busy you know, doing everything else. I know. Well, you know, it's. I was thinking it was going to get lighter on a lighter note, not lighter note, but heavy note. You know, I took care of my mom for many years, and she she just kept declining and declining. The number of hours that it was taking me to care for her just kept growing, and so between as much as I worked doing this and my own stuff and taking care of her, I was just not able to keep up my channel and make content and I was just sort of sucked. And so I finally, I want to say finally, she's placed now in assisted living. So my time has freed up a little bit more from that. So who's to say the weather is nice. I might get excited to do it again. Never know. Family first. For sure. Of course. Of course. All right. And last but not least, Teresa Einecker. Hi, so I'm a board member of CNJFO also, al along with Nick, so you can find me at CNJFO. I'm the New Jersey State Director for Women for Gun Rights. You can reach out on womenforgunrights.org and then click that you're interested and you live in New Jersey and you might want to get in touch uh, with us. And I'm on Instagram, Teresa Einacker. I'm on Twitter, Teresa Einacker. I'm out on Facebook too, so look forward to seeing you out there. Super. All right. Very cool. So, Steve, if you're looking to get involved. Oh, but um, Rights, New Jersey has their own Instagram page and our own Facebook page. We do. Yes, oh, we do. So you can nice. follow yeah. our group there as well. Yes. Very mm -hmm. cool. All right. So you need to go to Women for Gun Rights, Steve, to get yourself involved with the um, uh, Women for Gun Rights in Wisconsin, which is behind the Cheddar Curtain. All right. <laughs> we love um, you. We love you. If, if you have not subscribed to either the Meet the Pressers or the Writing Shotgun with Charlie YouTube channel, please what make sure you, you do wait that. for hit the notification bell so you know when we're doing shows next because we're working on a couple more shows, we're working on some more guests. Uh, you'll get the notifications. Obviously, you need to follow us on all of our social media because we put out the links when we have shows. So that is how you guys need to uh, to find out the next time we're doing a show. We thank you guys all for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys being here. Um, Nick and Kelly and Teresa, thank you guys all for, for hopping on and, uh, no we will see you guys next time. Thank you very much. See you in three weeks. Stay safe. Bye. See you there with a cigar. <laughs>